we're feeling ready to um, begin, then I will begin to introduce myself. My name is Michaela Stith. I go by she, her pronouns, and I was born and raised in Dena'ina Althnena here in Anchorage, Alaska. Uh, I am the Climate Justice Director with Native Movement, which is one of the organizations that are core collective partners of the Just Transition Collective. The Alaska Just Transition Collective, for those of you who may just be joining us in this work, is an intersectional cohort of regional and statewide organizations that collaborate through an aligned vision for the future of a just transition. We recognize indigenous knowledge as essential to this work and look toward our communities for guidance on the path forward. Uh, our organizations work throughout the unceded territories of the indigenous peoples of Alaska. And we understand that Alaska Native people have been living in relationship and stewardship with these lands for time and memorial. And for, it's for that reason that we use the term remembering forward, Nungalnik, or Kulchanya. I'd like to first acknowledge and thank any elders that are here in the room, as we appreciate that guidance and stewardship in the just transition. And I'd also like to invite if any elders would like to uh, speak or give a prayer here at the beginning, we would very much welcome that. Just click the raise hand button. All righty. So with this, uh, we will begin to get started. I'd like to first tell you a little bit about what we're planning tonight. We're going to be able to look back on, or I guess you could say remember forward, some of the work that we have been doing this year, including the uh, second Just Transition Summit. And um, we're going to start off with a talk about fundraising from Margie. Then we'll do a bit of a um, reflection on the summit that was earlier this year. And we have a great film that will be premiered tonight that GLOW has put together about that summit. We'll talk about some more work we've done to build a narrative of dress transition, including publishing the very first regeneration zine. And uh, we'll have a film after that as well, discussing some of the issues that are near to our heart across Alaska. And um, then we'll talk about a very exciting opening up in our membership and where we're going in 2023. So with that, I will pass it over to Margie. Hey everyone, great to see you all. Thanks, Michaela. Um, it is the, yeah, cold, dark times when it's really nice to gather in community and to remember those hot, sunny days. We were on the um, patio outside of the Denina Center for the Just Transition Summit. Um, and I've got Nora here, um, who was, yeah, also at the summit and um, is so much fun. So she's going to help me um, with the fundraising pitch tonight because you can't say no to a cute baby, right? Um, so definitely a really wonderful community to bring a kiddo into and to be part of sustaining. You all can donate. Um, anytime, but especially um, here at the end of the year, we would really appreciate if you include us in your end of year giving plans um, and in fostering that communal giving, um, we invite you to donate right now while we're all gathered together over the course of the evening. Just drop it in the chat when you do so we can all give like little confetti celebrations and um, we really celebrate donations of all sizes and that is um, 
a huge part of um, how we can, um, yeah, invest in and support our community. And um, it's really more about the relationships and the number of supporters we have um, than like just the sheer dollars raised sometimes. Um, it's, yeah. So, so showing us your support by donating and um, thanks Hannah for dropping the link. And it's also a great time to buy some of the swag. Um, we have new Just Transition merch, great, make great holiday gifts. And um, then your whole fam can feel part of the Just Transition community as well. So um, we're, yeah, really grateful to all of you for joining us this evening. And um, I am honored to share this joyful invitation to be part of sustaining and growing the beautiful work that we're here to celebrate and reflect on. So um, yeah, with that, I think I'll just close by saying as a donor, I really uh, appreciate being in community. And thanks, Leah, for getting the donation train rolling here. Um, anyone else want to donate right now? If you want to um, direct message me a pledge um, of sending a check later, um, we also greatly appreciate that. So um, yeah, with that, I will pass the mic back. And um, just so much gratitude to all of you um, for being here. Thanks, Margie. Thanks, Leah. Thanks, Mindy. This is very, very exciting. Uh, happy to be here in the giving season. So next, we're going to talk a little bit about the summit that many of you probably attended. Um, I'm going to pass it off to Gunnar to discuss that. And just before I do that, for those of you who may not know, the Just Transition Collective is made up of uh, a core group of partners who help put together this summit by collaborating on what it would look like and what the events would be and, and what we needed in order to take care of each other. Those organizations are Native Movement, Fairbanks Climate Action Coalition, Alaska Community on, um, Action on Toxics, the Alaska Center, Alaska Public Interest Research Group, Native Conservancy, and uh, also the Native Peoples Action previously. Let me pass it over to you, Gunnar. Thanks, Michaela. And uh, thanks for everyone for being here and spending your evening with us and wrapping up this year um, and looking forward to the next. Um, I've been uh, coordinating the Just Transition Collective for about a year and a half now. Um, and I'm just always so inspired by and learn so much from all of the people that make up this community um, and who work with us or just play alongside us as the JTC, especially over this past year. Um, I live in Ketchikan. Um, I'm currently calling in from, from Arizona on Yavapai lands, but um, it's just nice to be able to build community across the state being somewhere like Ketchikan. Um, and that's something I've always really enjoyed about the work we do is the just transition. Um, and looking back through the year, through 2022, and all of the things that we were able to achieve, the summit is like an obvious um, standout for me. And I'm sure for a lot of people who were there, um, personally putting on an event that size was a learning experience, <laughs> to say the least. Uh, but I know I got so much out of of that process, but also just being there and being with the community and learning so much. Um, one of our keynote speakers, Gopal Dainani, his words, uh, what if we're already winning and we don't even know it? That lives in my brain rent free. <laughs> I can't like, I think about that so often in the work we do. If we're already like, what if we're already winning and we don't even know it? Um, because when you look at all the organizing going on across Alaska, how could we not be winning? We had over 300 people in attendance at the summit, and that number is mind boggling to me. Um, just so many wonderful people doing so much wonderful work. It's worthy of celebration in my eyes because we are, I mean, we are winning and we have this bright future ahead of us. And that's just, uh, just how he phrased that just will live with me forever. Um, another part that sticks to me is Jose Bravo and his keynote speech. And I have this one written down. We must understand that the solutions are going to come from our communities, not multi-billion dollar corporations, from our communities and the folks that work there. That resonated so much with me because it's just so clearly true. 
and I love that the work we do, I mean, we really center these solutions um, that we as indigenous peoples of Alaska have known to be true. Um, and the communities that we support, the communities come up with these solutions that work. Um, and being able to embrace that in these communities-based solutions is something that I really love about the, the organizing we do in Alaska. So those are two parts of the, the summit that really stick with me. Um, outside of just being able to be in such a space like that, especially after two years of, of a pandemic that's still raging onward, but being able to find the, the way to do that in a way that felt really safe and felt um, just so needed to me at that time was something that was really, really inspiring to me. And I'm really excited to be planning and, and being a part of our next one. We're looking at 2024. I'm not going to say much more about that because we don't know dates or anything, but um, hoping you know to really have another one that is just bringing more people into this really cool community that we're building. Um, I'll keep my part short. I know there's a lot of people that are, you know, have some amazing things to be sharing with these videos and such. Um, but so yeah, just thank you for being here. I think events like this one um, and and the summit and, the, and just even the Zoom here are things that just really energize me personally. Um, I feel like being on call after call of stopping the bad and there just feels like there's so much bad to be stopping these days that it can be detrimental to our mental well-being. I know that I'll start to let this sort of like gloom sit in, especially on these dark, dark days of, of, of winter. Um, so things like this, yeah, really energize me in the work that I do. And they make me realize that we are winning and that we do have these solutions that our communities are putting forward. Uh, so there's just so much for me to be excited about moving forward. So I'm really, yeah, just, just energized and full with all of the events that we do and just the people being here in community. So just want to say thank you for that and uh, looking forward to our next summit. And I'll pass it off to whoever. Thanks. Thanks, Gunnar. I really appreciate that. I think, you know, the process is what matters as much as the product and that just by living in our values and uh, trying to figure out what it is we're even aiming at for a just transition, we're winning. We're prevailing against a system that doesn't want us to do that. And we'll be able to reminisce a little more on the summit. This is our, this is the premiere of the end of year video for JTC, never before seen. And so we're very excited to share that with you and give some warm fuzzy feelings, especially for those people who have been here. Yeah, I'll speak a little bit before you press play on that, Tara. Um, I just wanted to talk a little bit about this, uh, this film. Um, my name is uh, Glow Chitwood. I should probably introduce myself. Um, I use she, her pronouns, and uh, I am the Just Transition Communications Coordinator. Um, hi, everybody. I live uh, on Supiak land down in Seward, Alaska, um, and I know many of you or have seen you in various spaces, but I'm really grateful that you're with us here tonight. Um, I have been thinking a lot about community and the gentleness that lies in forming community. Um, and I think we often talk about like how powerful it is to work collectively and take action together. But what I've been noticing recently in human and non-human communities is the gentleness and care and recipro reciprocity that exists in well-defined relationships. Um, for example, uh, <laughs> one of my favorite trees in Alaska is the Western Hemlock. And um, maybe you're thinking I'm a nerd because I have a favorite tree um, and I am. And uh, it's, it's my favorite because it's a strong and powerful looking adult tree, but in order for the Western hemlock seeds to grow, they have very specific needs. Um, the Western hemlock doesn't grow alone. It has adapted to only grow in the shaded moss of well-established old growth forests, which I just think is so beautiful. Um, it only thrives in community and it relies on like wisdom and things that have already existed in the past. It really understands like remembering forward. Uh, the idea that the tools we need to successfully transition to gentle communities of action and care already exist. Um, so I'm excited to share uh, with you all our, our end of year film, um, Remembering Forward 2022. Um, this was certainly a collaborative 
project um, that took a lot of different folks and a lot of different communities. Um, I'd like to highlight Tanner, um, who's dropping links in the chat. A lot of the clips you'll see in this are his, um, so I appreciate that a lot, and other folks are featured. You might be featured in this and not even know it until you watch it right now, which is kind of funny, but I hope that's a good thing. Um, <laughs> yeah, I hope you enjoy it. Thank you. Would you say we we remember it? We remember it. Yeah. Novolnik. 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 Yeah. We cannot do this work unless we're taking care of ourselves. We cannot do this work unless we understand that there is a lot of healing to be done. Essentially, we're up against a major climate crisis. We're up against dwindling finite resources. And at the root of it all, we're up against colonial structures that have been instituted to make some people wealthy. But this is a time to have a conversation about how to be adaptable and how to be loving and how to come from light instead of fear. Listen, understand that most of the solutions are going to come from our parents, not from the multi-billion dollar corporations, but from our community and the folks that work. That is why food sovereignty, energy democracy, transformative justice, cooperative housing, community clinics, community-based healing, traditional foods as medicine. That is why these things all matter, because this is not us demanding that somebody else do something for us. This is our communities meeting our needs. the other isn't sustainable. It's up to us in this room to push that mark. Story is a deep medicine. With the Native Conservancy, I wanted to focus on solutions where we actually engage in our subsistence way of life and, and we grow things on the land and in the water. When I started learning about broadband and what it could do for our people, I was like, oh my gosh, this is the vehicle that has all of our solutions that we can drive. Broadband is going to be the significant tool and lifestyle that helps Indigenous people return to our values in a significant way. We can achieve just transition for the next seven generations. And we can do this with love and compassion for each other and for Mother Nature.
Thanks, folks. Appreciate you watching that. Um, while Tara um, works on bringing the slides back up, uh, really appreciate anybody who's featured in that, all the work it took to have our last year together, or not our last, our most recent year together, <laughs> with many more to come. Um, really grateful for all of you for being here now, too, even if it's your first time joining us. That's really special, too. Um, I wanted to move on to our next piece, which I'm really, really excited about. Um, so uh, we have a couple zines that came out this year, and I want to talk a little bit about both of them. Um, so this spring, um, alongside the Alaska Climate Alliance, um, we released a, a zine called Regenerative Economies, A Guide to a Thriving Alaska. Um, Margie was a big part of that, um, working with regenerative economies. Um, I really appreciate that work. Um, if you were at the Just Transition Summit this May, uh, you probably own a copy of that zine. Um, and the purpose of that was to put into context what a regenerative economy is with examples from different sectors around Alaska, um, things that uh, things like indigenous uh, owned and operated kelp farming, regenerative tourism, community owned renewable energy, and those are just a few examples of many. Um, so be sure to check that out um, to see some of those examples. Um, and then the summer, we also opened submissions for the first issue of uh, regenerative economy generation. It's also called Regeneration, um, which is a youth activist publication. Um, so we've talked a bit about the idea of remembering forward and relationship, relationships of reciprocity. And so the theme for the first issue was returning to balance. Um, and we got some really wonderful submissions. Our artists were uh, Sean Enfield, Brittany Woods Orison, Jesse Thornton, Z the Artivist, Grace Moore, and our humble host, Michaela Stith, as well. Um, so now we're going to hear uh, from at least one of our artists um, and their process and uh, the pieces they contributed to the zine. Um, so I'm really happy to introduce Grace Moore. Welcome on to my everybody. My name is Grace and I'm coming to you from New Movie Lands in Las Vegas. And the piece I submitted was Sovereign Sun. And the medium I chose to use for this piece was wood burning. And it was a um, Japanese beetle wood, which when that happens, it's a beetle infestation on the wood and it kills the tree, but it leaves these really beautiful dark striation marks where you can see towards the top of the piece. And I think that's impactful because, or important because even though like something bad and it caused pain to the tree, it still was able to be reused and turned into something beautiful. And I chose to do wood burning, which is essentially just heat on wood as my application to making this piece. And I chose wood burning because once you put the like little metal that looks like this on there, it, it's there, you can't take it off. It's burnt into the wood. And I think um, with the piece talking about sovereignty, which is not only the right to self-govern, but also the duty that we have to our lands to respect them and make sure we're protecting them. It's we're here to make our mark, especially as indigenous people, we're here because this is the right thing to do. We need to protect our lands. And this year, it was talking about returning to balance. And to me, returning to balance is when our migratory paths are protected, our fit, water's filled with fish, our native lands are acknowledged, they're protected, they're healthy, they're abundant. And I think the way to do that is native sovereignty. And so you can see the sovereign son, Akurta, she's depicted with tunit, traditional tattoo marks, and she is looking over the land and making sure everything's as it should be. And yeah, thank you for having me tonight. Thanks so much, Grace. Really appreciate you sharing your beautiful work. Um, yeah, it was really exciting to hear from you um, and, and receive your, your contribution. It's just like a really beautiful piece and, and a unique thing to include um, like in a digital publication. So I was really excited that you contributed. Um, I'm not sure if our other artist is here. Uh, if Z, the artivist, is here, can you put a message in the chat or let us know that that you're here and we'll uh, have you present? Um, 
but we can, uh, until we hear from them, I'm not sure they made it, um, we can talk a little bit about the next issue, um, which Tara, I believe, is two slides away. Yeah, thanks. Um, so uh, one of our artists, oh, I also want to mention, uh, yeah, one of our artist's pieces, Brittany Woods Orison, had a film featured in the zine, and that film is on display along other films uh, at the Anchorage Museum right now. Uh, through March of 2023. Um, it's the exhibits called Stories for Climate Justice. So if you're in the Anchorage area, be sure to check that out. Um, and if you'd like to contribute to the next regeneration, um, submissions have opened again today uh, for our next issue. So we'll be accepting uh, contributions until February 14th, 2023. Um, and here's a little bit more information about our theme. Um, extractive industries are obsolete and the solutions we need to solve intersecting crises already exist in the foundations of our communities, um, but it takes a spark to advocate for what we deserve. So what gets you organizing? How do you and your community light the match? So these are stories of uh, building community, standing up for ourselves, and nonviolent direct action. So if you have any ideas, um, Tanner will drop that link. Looks like he already did. And you can uh, feel free to email me or submit um, a piece. And I'll pass it back to, I think, Michaela. Yes. Thanks. Um, if anybody has any questions for Grace, then um, please drop them in the chat. I, I really appreciate your presentation. Thanks so much. Um, and I am already thinking of people who should be featured in that next zine. So, I'm looking forward to seeing that as well. I just like to plug Glow does an amazing job putting all of these graphics, all of the zines and um, some of the videos that you've seen here today together. And so I just really appreciate all of Glow's work. Um, so next we will have a discussion about some of the films that were produced in 2022 and we have a speaker James here um, who has been one of these excellent filmmakers um, who's produced work that has gotten eyes from all over the country and um, the world. James let me pass it off to you to talk about some of the films you've worked on for JTC this year. Uh, hello, everybody. Um, my name is James Johnson III. Um, I live in Fairbanks, Alaska, uh, Lower Tanana Dene. I'm a Khoikan Athabascan or Dinaknaga. Um, and uh, yeah, I live here with my wife, Princess uh, Johnson, who couldn't make it tonight. Um, so um, yeah, we we worked on two films that were completed for the Just Transition Just Transition Summit, um, and then currently finishing up uh, another Just Transition Summit video uh, for a Ninana project. Um, uh, the two that we finished in April and May, um, we had traveled to Akiak, uh, Alaska and Cordova, Alaska, and um, both really informative and great experiences for us. And, um, and the Akiak project, um, was about tribally owned um, internet access, uh, which they had been developing with a a, a couple um, that was using um, satellite technology to um, to reach their village, um, and they had internet up and running when we were there that was tribally owned and operated, which was um, a really big step for native communities in Alaska. And I think they had 17 other communities on board. Um, and uh, 
then we had traveled to Cordova and they were working on kelp farming um, as a sustainable practice, um, uh, which was also documented in, in, in our film. Um, and uh, this the Nana project that we're working on, um, their goal is to create um, a sustainable farming operation so they can have year round produce. Um, <clears throat> so it's, it's really great to see these communities kind of stepping up and utilizing their surroundings and what they have locally. Um, and um, I, I know Glow had uh, posed some questions, getting questions for me. And um, she was, she asked, you know, what, what did I enjoy most about going to these communities? Well, you know, I, I had never been to Akiak in Cordoba, um, so. And then being able to like sit down and have coffee and pancakes with you know the chief Mike Williams and see his dog team uh, was was great. And then you know when we were in Cordova, um, taking an hour boat ride in in the ocean and then seeing their kelp farm, and then putting me on a raft with this big camera rig attached to me and zipping around in the bay uh, was was fun yeah um so i'm just really happy to be involved in doing this work and then also at the same time working on my filmmaking skills so um and uh yeah i guess i guess i will stop there um, and, and I'm, I'm, I'm more than happy to answer any questions that anyone might have. Thank you. Perhaps we can um, get one of the, that Ninana short film queued up and we can enjoy one of the films and I'll let your questions ruminate over that time. I'm Eva Dawn, I'm from Ninana in Manly Hot Springs, and my parents are Dim and Joy Burke. I, I was raised at a fish camp 90 miles down the river on the Tanana. And we ran a trap line about 30 miles west of here, probably like halfway to the Kantishna River. The people with land back is not just about returning land ownership, but there's a lot of public lands that are managed by people that have no connection to those lands. They sit in their offices and they hire a team of scientists that might not be from here, and they make a whole plan about how they get to use our lands with little input from the local people or the indigenous people who live there. And so that's a, that whole process needs to change. And I'll say this about food, this is food sovereignty. My dad was born a free man. Nobody told him when and where and how to hunt, fish, or trap. He did that on his own, with his own indigenous knowledge. We've gotten into these habits. I mean, like, how do we start to break these habits? And it's just, it's just a little bit at a time, you know? Little one step at a time. Round of applause. Thanks, James, for sharing that. Um, just a, a note, you all might have been following that um, auction and the land back campaign. And there were two plots of land that were bought back 
for a local community group. Um, and there's still more work to be done. So this is definitely continuing to be relevant. So any hands raised for questions for either of our artists? I'll give you a, a few seconds and then um, we'll have some reflections about where we're going next. All righty. Thank you so much to both of you. So earlier this fall in August, um, we gathered uh, the members of the seven organizations that I had mentioned earlier that are core collective partners in the Just Transition Collective to talk about formalizing some of the structures that are um, governing our operations, as well as where we want to go uh, in the remainder of 2022 and into 2023. And here were some of the main things that we decided upon. Expanding relationships, connecting with youth, and creating new ways to get involved. So over the first two days, we had these discussions about how we want to formalize our, our procedures um, and, and doing some planning for our work as the Just Transition Collective. And on the final day of our retreat, um, we met at the Umoja co-working space in downtown Anchorage, um, and we invited youth to come into the space where we were meeting in order to have some discussions about how the Just Transition Collective should show up, particularly in Black communities in Anchorage, uh, and, and how we can be partners with youth and increase the um, direction that they have over our work. And so in that expanding relationship discussion, um, we first would like to thank um, the leaders who took the time to meet with us and, and talk about what would be useful to them. Um, we learned that we can be showing up in those events that are hosted by the organizations that we met with in order to show our interest um, so that they can eventually come work with us as partners. We also learned that we need to be making things as accessible as possible um, for folks who are working, um, for folks who may want some, you know, um, some more accommodations around how we set up our meetings. And so we learned that we will have um, spaces throughout 2023 where we can join, invite people to just come in and connect. Um, and we also are going to be increasing our programming uh, in order to have focused conversations as well on particular issues that are important to our. Um, to our people we'd like to be members. With our new ways to get involved in addition to uh, our programming and our events, we'll be having, um, we'll be having new, um, well, we have, sorry, my brain didn't work for a second. We'll be having a, a membership packet that actually is going live today where we're really explaining what are the different um, points of entry into being part of the Just Transition Collective and creating an online application form for folks to express their interest in becoming members. This is really exciting for us um, to be able to not only show up more in other folks' communities, but creating uh, more clear pathways for folks to come into our community as individuals or as organizations. And so 
Um, Tanner has dropped the link in the chat as to new opportunities to get involved. And I really, uh, I really support folks going to that link. Some of the key points there are talking about our points of entry and structure. I've mentioned the core collective partners, those organizations that meet regularly to um, plan the work of the Just Transition Collective. We're also opening up membership for tables, which would be made up of collaborators who align with the Just Transition framework and ideas that we've posed, um, but who work on a particular issue and sector um, and work together on that issue. And this would be, uh, this would allow the Just Transition Collective to provide some comm support and other types of support um, to advance that work and um, also allow a forum for us to be able to get engaged in those discussions. Next, there would be a project-based collaborator folks who come in for a specific period of time on a specific project, um, perhaps like James here, who's been working on the films. And then there are members who are many of you who are here in the audience, individuals or organizations who want to be updated and who want to stay involved, but might not have the capacity to commit work hours toward making these events um, or, or other types of work happen. This is where we can learn, teach, and share together and build our community widely. So please check out that membership portal as we'd love to bring in more folks. And um, I'd also like to open it up for any questions that anyone might have about um, this entire event anything from our retreat to our membership announcement to the regeneration zine. And after that, we will close for the evening. Alrighty, um, James, we appreciate you. Um, we very much appreciate all of you for making the time tonight to come and see what all we have been up to, um, to reminisce on summit times and to look forward to the future. This is a very good point that Tanner has brought up in the chat. Gunner, who has been our beloved coordinator, is moving on to a new position and will still remain involved in the Just Transition Collective. But we're going to be hiring now for a Just Transition Collective director who will be able to take on the responsibilities of a director um, beyond planning a summit, also doing things like fundraising um, and formalizing procedures and building out membership. So please do check out that job opening, um, subscribe to our newsletter and follow our social media. We really appreciate all the energy that you bring to Just Transition and we hope that we can continue to amp that up. Thanks so much everyone and have a great evening.